let's get started, folks. I'm really excited to have you in the, in the webinar room with us, with Greg Morris. Uh, Greg is, as many of you know, one of the great experts, really a pioneer in bringing Japanese candle patterns to the United States. And we're so excited that we have an add-on that plugs right into Metastock with all of Greg's methodologies. We're really thrilled to have him in the webinar room to uh, just demonstrate this on a first-hand basis to you. It's really a rare opportunity for you. We're really excited. It looks like we've got a lot of folks coming in the room still. Uh, we'll go ahead and, and uh, start off. If you uh, wouldn't mind, just bear with me for a moment here. With our standard disclaimer. Uh, so we need to read this down. Just hold on a moment while I do that, and then we'll get started. This demonstration is designed to instruct you on using Metastock and accompanying software plugins and are not a recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using the specific indicators and features within the software. The information, software, and techniques presented today should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Metastock shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of their software, any trading strategies, or any information provided in connection with the company. Okay. Well, very good. Well, let's go ahead and turn the time over to our good friend, Greg Morris. And uh, certainly there will be some opportunities to ask questions a little bit later. So uh, if you do have a question, you can type it right there into the chat box. And Greg, I'll try to help you. If you'd like me to moderate some of that, you just let me know how I can assist, okay? Okay, well, thanks everyone for uh, participating today, and I apologize for the late start. Uh, dummy here had a little microphone problem, so. Uh, I wrote my book on candlesticks in uh, 1991. Uh, I had been to a seminar in Phoenix at the Camelback Inn in 1988. A large contingent of Japanese were there. Uh, introduced Hayashi, which was candlestick charting. That was our interpretation of it. And uh, I went back, uh, my partner Norm Marth and I at N-Squared, we, we created a candle pattern recognition program that we called Candle Power. And uh, I think it was Irwin, the publisher, called me after it had been out for about a year and said, you should write a book on this. And I said, well, I really don't have time. He said it'd probably help sell a lot of software. I said, let's talk. So that's how the book came about. And then uh, working with Metastock, we decided that uh, an add-on with some of the, just the primary features of what I like about candle pattern recognition and uh, using it would be a great add-on. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. The Candle pattern recognition is a very involved process. The Japanese books that I had translated were uh, really fairly vague, so I, I kind of set a lot of standards in the industry on, on what a pattern had to be defined as when you're using a computer. So this product has all that recognition code in it, but I want to talk about a couple of things uh, at the beginning here that help us uh, determine uh, if a pattern is valid or good or not. As you know, if you have a uh, pattern, this is an evening star pattern. It is a bearish reversal pattern. It's a three-day pattern. It uh, statistically works fairly well. However, if you take those three days and combine them into one single candlestick like this so that the opening on that first day, let me see if I can get this the opening right here, right there is the open, complies, uh, conforms with that open there. The close on the last day, which is right here, I'm close it right here, and there's the close there. So this candle pattern here, this candlestick, represents all three of these. And so if the concept is is that if this one is also a bearish pattern, then this, this, is a, this is a good confirmation for candle patterns. And you can see that it does fully support it because the shooting star is also a bearish pattern. Uh, all of this is built into the JCPR scoring system. It's all done automatically. You, don't, you, you, don't, you can't turn it on or off. It's just there. Uh, the scoring system uh, was taken from my book. I did, uh, this was the third edition of this book. I 
did this, gosh, I think about 10 years ago, and computing power was vastly improved from 15 years prior. Uh, gosh, I, I remember it was an old, I don't even remember what it was, it was an early PC, and I did this with 7,275 common stocks. They all had opening prices, and this accounted for about 14.6 million days of data running the statistics on all of these patterns. So uh, it's a, it was a fairly robust test. And I'm going to kind of go through this, this graph here and show you what some of this, this stuff means. First of all, up there, the, the yellow highlighted area, that's the pattern name. In this case, this is a matching low. Uh, and then the plus sign there means that it's a bullish pattern. If it was a minus sign, it'd be a bearish pattern. And then over on the top right, it says R plus. That means it's a reversal. It's a bullish reversal pattern. Uh, next is trend required yes. Now, I've been an advocate of insisting that people, uh, in, whether you're talking about candlesticks or whether you're talking about classic chart patterns, make sure it's in the proper trend. If you're going to have a bullish reversal pattern, it has to be in a downtrend. If you're going to have a bearish reversal pattern, it has to occur in an uptrend. Now, there are a couple of candlesticks out there, uh, one's called kicking, that a trend is not required, but all the others are. So this, this box will say yes on just almost all of the patterns. Confirmation, yes or no. Um, this is based on a subjective analysis that I've done saying that the, if the pattern has statistically worked fairly well, confirmation is not required, such as this one. However, some patterns statistically perform so, so poorly that I recommend that you wait for the next day to occur and hopefully a close in the direction of the pattern will happen and then you'll kind of get a confirmation of, of that. Uh, the frequency, uh, mean days between patterns. In this example, it says frequent, but you got to remember there were 14, uh, 14 and a half million days of data, and this particular pattern occurred on an average of once every 590 days through all those 7,000 stocks. So it, that is a fairly frequent occurrence. The bottom part is really the, the power of this chart. It talks about the, the, the ability of the pattern to predict the future, and the interval days is the next day is one, two days from there is two, et cetera, all the way to seven days out. It shows the percentage of time that it, that it was a winner. It shows you the average percentage gain on all of those. Then it shows the percentage of losers. Uh, and you know that's the complement of the winners. And then it shows the average percentage loss. And then the bottom row is the net profit divided by the net loss. It's very important data here because you want it to be consistent over a period of time. And this next slide kind of shows that. If, if it's a good pattern, it'll have positive net profit per loss over many of those time frames, those seven time frames. Most, in fact, I'd, I'd like to see it over most of them, maybe, maybe at least one through five. And then the, to, to narrow it down even better, the better patterns will have smaller average losses. So, and then again, this is all taken care of automatically in the uh, add-on, the Metastock add-on. A uh, couple of things that I've added into this product uh, are very nice. Automatic support and resistance. Uh, I have found that if a candle pattern completes itself at or near a support or an appropriate support, in other words, a bullish pattern, a bullish reversal pattern would want to be on a support line and a bearish reversal pattern would want to be on a resistance line. If they occur on those support and resistance lines, they tend to be much better patterns. Now, the, the nice thing about this support and resistance tool uh, is that it goes into your indicator file on Metastock, and you can use it 
with any other charting, you don't have to be running JCPR. You just have to have loaded JCPR, and then this, this automatic support and resistance tool will work on, with anything you've got. Candle pattern filtering. Um, this was a concept I created, uh, gosh, a very long time ago. I, I was trying to come out with a way to uh, enhance the ability of a pattern to work. And I, I realized that if you took stochastics, percent D, that's the three period moving average of percent K, the raw stochastics, and you said that, well, we know when percent D is above 80, we know that it's a matter of time before it will go below 80, and so we know that the, let's say the trigger is now cocked, there's going to be a downside move. So while stochastics percent D is above 80, let's look for bearish reversal patterns that occur during that period. And then when stochastics percent D is below 20, let's look for bullish reversal patterns. And this pat candle pattern, pattern filtering does this automatically. They tend to be a lot better when they're filtered. In other words, if a bearish reversal pattern occurred when stochastics percent D was at 50, it wouldn't be nearly as good as it would if it was at 85 or 90. So the JCP add-on has a candle trend. We're going to talk about that in a minute. It's got the support and resistance, automatic support and resistance, and then it's got the filtering binary. Those are the indicators. Uh, explorations, you can search for reversal patterns. And then I have in here where you can research for, you can search for confirmed reversal patterns. These are reversal patterns where the next, the, another day is required and it needs to close in the direction that the pattern was calling for. Kind of a day of confirmation, if you will. And then as, as we go down through this list, we're getting tighter and tighter restrictions. The third one there is filtered reversal patterns. In other words, the pattern has to occur when uh, stochastics is either, either above 80 for a bearish or below 20 for a bullish. And then the last one is the filtered reversal patterns confirmed. So the, the, depending on how, how tight you want the parameters to be, the bottom one will be the tightest to use. The advisor is, is just the Japanese candle pattern recognition, the, I'm sorry, the expert. Uh, I just put a couple of templates in because you can build templates all day long in Metastock. I've got one that's fairly clean, called, and I'm not very good at naming these things because I'm not very good at marketing, so I just called it clean charts. And then the JCPR filtering indicators, which show all the filtering tools used. So using the indicators included in JCPR, uh, the candle trend, when I did the book and the research 25 years ago, uh, I used a 10 period exponential moving average. I said if the body of the, if the pattern is above the exponential average, then we are in an uptrend. If it's below it, we're in a downtrend. You have to do something that's simple. You can't have a very complex process. Uh, but I've created a, a, a volatility adjusted trend which really, really works well. And again, this, this candle trend, even though it's called candle trend, you, it'll be in your indicator file and you can use it on any charts, outs, charts that are outside of the JCPR. In other words, it, it uses a true range of prices and, and as the prices expand or contract, the, the, the smoothing uh, plot tightens or loosens based upon that. This is a picture of it. You can see the red dots above the price. That means you're in a downtrend. If the red dots are below the price, in other words, prices are above the trend. And so you can see that it's, it's, it does a pretty good job of keeping the, the basic up and down trends in check. <clears throat> and you, you can control the parameters on that uh, slightly. As, as with the support and resistance, you can control those parameters also. Here's the support and resistance now. It's, it's defaulted for 126 periods. That's about half a year, uh, 156 days of data. And, and this is what it looks like. Uh, it automatically draws these lines. You don't have to draw them. These are lines that you could have easily drawn, but it's nice to have software do it for you. Uh, 
the red ones are the resistance and the green ones are the support and sometimes they're intermixed this was a, an example where they were spread out quite a bit the filtering binary consists of three indicators a nine day percent D a 14 day percent D and directional movement so the nine day percent D is probably the the most important so it, it carries 20 points the 14 day carries 10 and the directional movement carries 10 so the filtering binary here and it probably shouldn't be called a binary because it's got multiple positions but it can go from minus 40 to plus 40 uh, in other words it, whenever it's at plus 40 you are looking for bullish patterns in other words the plus 40 and a bullish pattern on the screen is the best combination you can have if it's at minus 40 you're looking for bearish patterns or anything between 20 and 40 and 20 and minus 20 and minus 40. Now it's a, it's kind of upside down compared to most overbought and oversold measures like stochastics but I put it that way because I think it's a little easier for most people to see. This is an example of it. You can see there's an engulfing pattern at the bottom that little E and the green engulfing bar and then you can see that the filtering in binary at the top is at 40 so this means that the engulfing pattern has all the filtering concepts working for it so this should be a very good trade based based upon that so working with the expert uh, there's a lot of stuff here you can see there's the filtering in binary the green plot on the top and then there's the volume at the bottom and then you can see the candle trend uh, hash bars at the bottom for bearish and bullish and then you can see the support and resistance lines in the middle and then you can see all the various patterns that are labeled I see a, a homing pigeon I see a uh, there well there's another homing pigeon there's a, some engulfing patterns uh, so they're all labeled for you we're going to go through each of these components and I'll explain them to you so if we look at the the expert we show where the pattern is we show what the trend is the trend is bearish you can see that in red right above the yellow box and then we show the percentage that the support and resistance lines are from the pattern for instance there's a homing pigeon pattern that you can see down at the bottom that's the last one let me get this arrow here I keep forgetting to use it right there is that homing pigeon pattern and right up here we're talking about where that pattern is relative to the support and resistance lines you, we can see them visually or we can look up here and measure them numerically and then it says a homing pigeon pattern was completed on this date here and then the this next box the pattern score here it's enlarged this says that the support and resistance in this scoring process the maximum you can get is 25 points uh, if the pattern is at or very close to a support or resistance line and in this case this pattern this uh, homing pigeon was next to a support line so it gets the full 25 points the next line down there where it says filtered a maximum of 40 points this one had 40 points as you can see the green plot up on the top was up there at plus 40 and then it breaks it down and shows you that percent D nine nine day percent D 14 day percent D and directional in indicator was all positive next I want to see volume increasing through the days the pattern is trading in other words I want to see volume build and there's three three breakdowns on volume the volume above a certain average the volume strong on the last day and the volume building throughout the day each worth five points so a total of 15 points for volume in this case the volume did not contribute anything to the scoring system and then statistics <clears throat> these are the statistics that came from the book when I did the 14 million days of data uh, a maximum of 15 points possible if if the statistics behind the pattern supported it in this case only 12 points were awarded out of 15 
And then the breakdown that we talked about at the very beginning where you uh, take the multiple days of the pattern and convert it into a single day, does it support the pattern? Uh, only worth five points because it's, it's not that critical, but in this case it did not support the pattern, so there were no points given there. So that's that pattern scoring process. And then, <clears throat> then at the bottom, and you can't, you can barely see this, let me get the, right there, we talk about the percent chance of success. Now this is, all this is, is totaling up the scores. The scores, if it, on the maximum possible of everything working would be 100%, would be 100. And so this pattern, 77 out of 100 items were met. And then we have a brief discussion of the pattern. Uh, clearly, you should have the book to go along with this, where it goes into what I like to say excruciating detail on all of this. Uh, but w this will just pop up and give you a quick little, a quick and dirty little uh, view of what that pattern is, if you don't know. Also, you can see all these red arrows drawn on the, the chart in the center plot. These are just pointing out that all the patterns that are identified on this stock, which happens to be Apple, are, are still shown and you can use your cursor to go back and, and look at them. The explorations, uh, again, the, these are just like the uh, what I was telling you, they, they start with the loosest expiration and build to the tightest. The top one it only identifies reversal patterns, um, and then the second one means they're reversal patterns that are confirmed. Uh, we don't do expirations on continuation patterns. These are all just reversals. Uh, and then the third one is the filter. That means it has to be above 80 for per stochastic percent D, 14 day percent D. If it's above 80, then a bearish reversal pattern would be a good filtered pattern. And then filtered patterns, filtered reversal patterns confirm. This is where uh, not only is it filtered by percent D, you also have another day after the pattern that moves in. The, for instance, in a bearish pattern, you have a clo on the an extra day that closes down even more than the pattern. So uh, the bottom one is a very tight thing. Those, those patterns should work extremely well, but you, you will not see a lot of them because we've got so many restrictions on what is going to be displayed. Uh, that actually completes the uh, presentation. Uh, I think Dave's going to look at some of the questions. I'll be happy to spend a few minutes answering questions. So thank you. Thank you, Greg. We do have some questions here uh, that have come up. Looks like there, Brian is interested in a little bit more information about how you develop the statistical data, specifically if you're using the stochastics filter with that statistical data. Uh, the stochastics filter wasn't part of the statistical analysis. Uh, and I, I'm not trying to sell the book, but I've got two full chapters that talk about the entire, I was an aerospace engineer and the book has two complete chapters that go into just painful detail on everything, the thought process, et cetera, on, on pattern identification and creating the statistics. <clears throat> Entirely too evolved to be talked about here, sorry. Okay, any other questions that you have from the group for Greg about the plugin? Got a few people typing here. Brian would like to know if this is applicable to intraday charting. Well, uh, it it will work on intraday, but let me let me give you my two cents on intraday. <clears throat> the Japanese believe that the time from the close of one day to the open of the next was a very important period of time because a lot of decision making was done. For instance, on the East Coast, the market closes at 4 and doesn't open up till 9.30 the next morning. I know there's before and after market trading, et cetera, but we're talking about the old days. That's a lot of time to make a decision. In fact, that's sometimes the only time some people can make decisions on buying and selling. If you use an intraday data and you have, uh, 
let's say 30 minute bars then the time frame from the close of one bar to the open of the next is the next tick not a lot of time to make decisions so you're and you're a lot of times if the trading activity isn't high you won't get very many gaps and gaps are a very important part of candle pattern identification so I tell people uh, I don't recommend you use this on intraday data uh, I don't mind using candlestick charting but candle pattern recognition on intraday uh, you're just stretching the concept too far more questions coming in. What is the difference between the evening star and the abandoned baby after a price run up? The, the abandoned baby is uh, it, it's, it's kind of like an island reversal. Uh, it's, it's a little doji that's up there that clears the highs of the first and the last day. In other words, it's completely abandoned, doesn't even touch the price. It's, it's gapped up and then it gaps down. And so, and you got to remember these names. Uh, Steve Neeson probably came up with most of the names. When I was going through the literature in Japan, my friend would say, "I don't know where he got that name, but we we we, we weren't trying to fight City Hall, so we just kept all the names." All right. There's a question here about using the add-on with forex trading. Well, sure. Uh, I, I say that you can do pattern recognition. Uh, I recommend daily. I don't recommend weekly either because I'm getting off subject here, but weekly has got the same problems. You, you could have the open, the high, and the low on Monday, and then the close would be Friday. Not a, you know, not a very good representation of that data, but 4X, you're going to be looking at a ratio of currencies and uh, you can use candle pattern recognition on those because everybody's looking at those 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 daily bars and uh, the daily candlesticks. So sure, there's there's no problem with that. A couple more questions coming in. Uh, trying to understand this one, but it looks like can we predict a price target uh, for any specific time using yeah. Uh, that's that's a good question because I know with classic patterns like head and shoulders, you know, if you measure from the head down to the neckline, that's the price projection below the neckline. Uh, no, I, I've never seen anything that makes projections, uh, price projections. In other words, uh, it's just saying, hey, we're we're seeing a reversal, and uh, if you participate in it, uh, hopefully it'll last a while. But no projections. Uh, book is on Amazon. It's called Candlestick Charting Explained. I just saw the next question. All right, excellent. Lots of people who are interested in the book. Which version of Metastock offers the JCPR? It will work with your existing versions. I think as far back as uh, version 11. It is 11, functioning 11. with the yeah, 11, 12, and 13, I think, is what it is. Correct. Looks like we have a few more coming in. Okay, there's a number of questions here. Um, let's see, let's say catch up here. So the difference, you'd like me to explain the difference between the opening and closing of a stock and breaking out above the high of that stock. And can that be taken as a true target? Uh. 
I, I don't. I, I really don't understand the question, but uh, I, I have not done any research, study, or spent any time trying to use candlesticks to make price projections. I don't think they were ever intended to do that. We are recording this I, presentation. Go ahead, Greg. I, I see another question about uh, using the filtered template. It, sh it does not show the scale of 40 and minus 40 and plus 40. Now, I, I have no idea why it wouldn't do that because it does. I've, I've, I use this all the time, so you might want to contact uh, Metastock's support on that. That's, that could be a scale issue or something. Uh, I know Steve Bigelow very well, and I have no idea what his his add-on is like, but uh, I know Steve, and it's probably a good one. Uh, Valerie wants to know if this will be posted for review. Uh, I uh, that has to go to Dave there. I don't know. Hopefully, it will be. Yes, it will. We are recording, and we will post it for review to our web, uh, our channel on YouTube at youtubecom metastock Okay, here's another question. Candlesticks and candle volume. Um, well, good. This was uh, this was a great question because I was the one that created candle volume. In fact, when I did, I called it candle power. Basically, it's the body of the candlestick that has a width, kind of like Dick Arm's equi volume, that represents the volume for the amount on the screen. And then when the software industry took it over, they changed it to candle volume and I've got bigger fights to fight so we just leave it candle volume. So it's kind of like equi it's kind of like a combination between candlesticks and equi volume charting. The difference is is that the candle volume only shows the width of the volume on the body, which is the difference between the open and the close. Where equi volume charting shows the width of the box from the distance between the high and the low, so the ec that's that's that that is the exact difference between the two, and not the only difference. Anybody else? While, uh, while these questions in, uh, are coming through, let me mention this, that the, the add-on, the JCPR, uh, is normally available for $399. Uh, we're offering a $50 discount, and so we want to make sure that you have an opportunity to add this to your arsenal of tools in Metastock. Um, it's really, a, very literally, like having Greg Morris kind of over your shoulder while you're looking at these. The commentary on this add-on is so much more extensive than anything else we've ever produced. Um, it really is one of the great add-ons and something you should have. And so we are offering a $50 discount on that. And you can obtain that by just going to our sales department here locally. I'll put in the phone number, or you can go to our website at metastock.com to order the add-on as well. Any other questions for Greg today before we go ahead and conclude our presentation? Okay. Okay, well, thank you very much. I enjoyed it. Thank you so much, Greg. It's been great to have you in the room. Uh, once again, everybody, go ahead and give us a call so we can get you set up with the add-on. Um, we'd want to help you out in any way we can. Thank you again, Greg. Great to have you here. Thanks. I appreciate it. Bye-bye.